Good evening. Uh, it's my pleasure to be with you this evening. My name is Dr. Dan Alcon. I'm the scientific director of the Blanchett Rockefeller Neurosciences Institute. Our institute is named in honor of Senator Rockefeller's mother, Blanchette, who died some years ago of Alzheimer's disease and for this reason brought particularly the attention uh, of the uh, Rockefeller family to Alzheimer's disease and it was uh, at approximately 10-12 uh, years ago that uh, I uh, had the opportunity to um, discuss the idea of creating a brain science institute that would be devoted to looking at the molecular basis of particularly cognitive functions of the brain and from those molecular understandings, those molecular mechanisms, to start to generate practical solutions that could be tested in the clinic. So right from the beginning, our mission at the Rockefeller Institute was to translate basic molecular neuroscience into clinical discoveries. And we've been so fortunate in the last several years to be doing just that. In fact, this mission uh, really started for me many, many years ago when I was a medical student. And I was very impressed with the uh, common occurrence of how people behave in certain ways as if they were reading a script. And that script is written for them, and for many of us, very early in childhood. And it rarely changes. The stage may be set differently, but the script is the same. And that script is set by memory. And so for this reason, I brought my biophysical and biochemical interests to the question of how the brain accomplishes this remarkable, mysterious ability to store memories almost for a lifetime. What physical, chemical, and structural events actually allow us to store memories for many, many decades? This is an amazing mystery. But within that mystery, the solutions for brain disease reside. And we've been very, very fortunate at the Rockefeller Neuroscience Institute in the context, really, of um, explosive molecular neuroscience in the 21st century to really uncover basic mechanisms of memory that actually involve the formation of new synapses, which means new connections between the brain cells, which means formation of networks inside the brain. And then to find that from that molecular understanding, we could target particular molecules with drugs that could be administered to people potentially and have already been, in some cases, clinically tested for other indications that might actually encourage the growth of new synaptic connections. Why is this important? New, sy new synaptic connections are important for so many different diseases that afflict us. Alzheimer's disease, more than anything else, shows its symptoms as a function of the loss of these connections, the loss of synapses. You can see a direct correlation between the loss of memory function, the loss of functions that people suffer during Alzheimer's disease, and the loss of these connections. Head trauma, stroke, traumatic brain injury, even depression, and of course mental retardation, all result from the loss of these connections. So if we can find drugs that encourage the growth of new connections, and I can tell you that we actually have found such drugs, then we have the opportunity that perhaps we can actually help people recover from these dreadful afflictions. And this is what we're about at the Rockefeller Neuroscience Institute. With these new drug classes, and we have now patented and developed patent positions for a variety of these patent classes and drug classes. And we hope to partner with private sector interests, maybe pharmaceutical companies. We are hopeful of signing such a uh, partnership very, very soon in the next few weeks. To partner to use their for-profit incentives with our non-for-profit uh, orientation and together bring drug answers to the clinic, bring treatments to the clinic. At the same time, from an understanding of memory at the very molecular level, we hope also to be able to diagnose diseases such as Alzheimer's disease right at the onset of the disease, right when it starts to beginning. And the analogy with cancer is not unreasonable. When we find cancer early on, we can often cure it. 
And we believe that if we can find Alzheimer's disease early on, we can prevent, delay, and maybe even cure the disease. And that's the objective that we've set for ourselves, along with, of course, the world scientists working on these types of problems. You know, uh, some years ago, this adventure, this odyssey for me, began in ways that I never expected would unfold today. I thought in those days that maybe I could make some contribution to the knowledge base that would eventually let the next generation um, generate such drugs. But here we are, we have drugs today that look promising. But in those days, I started with a very simple creature, a snail from the sea. And that snail showed what's called Pavlovian conditioning. Pavlovian conditioning is something that Pavlov originally identified with his dog work in Russia toward the turn of the century. And believe it or not, Leibniz in Germany actually identified the phenomena of Pavlovian conditioning and wrote about in, it, in this uh, w specific way in a book he called The Monadology. So the Pavlovian conditioning phenomenon has really been understood or known for more than three centuries and Pavlov brought it to a new level and we thought that by looking at this Pavlovian conditioning in a simple creature, the sea snail, Hermesenda, we could generate a wiring diagram, a precise circuitry, which we actually have done. And then in that circuitry, identify the molecules that were changing and allowing that animal to store the memory responsible for Pavlovian conditioning. Now, most recently, in the last years, we've taken the mechanisms, those molecular mechanisms that we found in the snail, and then later proved to also be operating in mammalian animal brains, and now start to test the generality to humans in the context that Alzheimer's disease actually targets those same molecular events that we found in the snail early in the course of Alzheimer's disease. And finding those targets not only validates the generality of these molecular mechanisms, but it has started to open up the way for a whole new era in the treatment of brain disease.